Okay, welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. Alternator wires, well, this is the main power feed. This one is the uh, trigger wire from the warning lamp on your dashboard. And this one is, well, it would be your um, rev counter if you had one fitted to your vehicle. Right, so if you do an alternator change, always make sure these terminals are lovely and clean. Uh, clean them up with a bit of grit paper. And also, this is a consideration that most people forget, is clean the brackets where the alternator is going to bolt onto, because this is an earth path. Okay, so either wire brush or a bit of grit paper. And also, on your alternator, especially if it's a second-hand one, you have the lugs which will make contact with the bracket. Clean these up too with a bit of grit paper. And don't forget this one down the bottom here. Not so bad if it's new, of course. Okay guys and girls, just to, to remember if you're working on uh, electrical cables, make sure you disconnect the earth of the battery. This way you're not going to get sparks flying about everywhere when you're uh, handling large cables. Obviously uh, some of you watching won't have a 300 TDI, however compared to the 300 TDI Discovery which has a little bit more space at the front, I found that the Defender had to remove the EGR pipe put the uh, alternator in backwards first and then get it to the bracket. This is the way we roll. Okay, so the back of the alternator, the terminals are speed signal wire. This one's the warning lamp and this one's B+, which is battery feed. Okay, so the terminals have to be tightened so they're nice and snug and not loose. If B+, comes loose it could cause a short in the voltage regulator so make sure you check it <laughs> So this is an alternator and basically it is an AC generator which has had the current converted to DC for use in a motor vehicle. Diodes, as you can see here, I'll show you the symbol in a second, rectify AC to DC and it's a one-way current flow. Now this is the symbol for a diode if you don't know. This lets current flow in only one direction. Okay, so the job of the diode is, is used as a one-way check valve, lets current flow in only one direction. Diodes rectify the AC voltage into DC voltage, so the battery gets the correct polarity, which is very important. And a failing diode uh, could be guilty of a parasitic drain, where your battery goes flat overnight and you can't find the cause. Right, so um, finding a faulty diode, we have a certain test we can do with a multimeter. Um, this basically is to check whether the current is going one way around the system. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. So with the multimeter, you see here it has ohms and an alarm. This sends a voltage down um, for continuity checking. This one here actually has a diode check and an alarm as well. Again, it's a continuity checker. Not all multimeters are the same, and depending on what one you have, OL or I means open circuit or infinity or um, out of range resistance, which is very, very high resistance. Okay, so I'll use this meter, which has a continuity test. Check diodes. Touching the leads together should be zero. Opening them apart will give me a sign of infinity or open circuit. Okay, All right, so the first thing to do is to put one lead onto earth, okay, of the body and the other one onto the B plus terminal of the alternator, what we should get is a reading. Let's not worry too much about the uh, actual reading. This one says 4.1 and the other on my test meter is uh, 8 point something. Right, so we have a current flow through one side and this is the downloads are letting a current through and if we uh, turn the leads over it should be infinity or open circuit, which means the diodes are blocking the uh, test current going through. You can do this test on the kitchen table with an alternator before you fit it or in the vehicle. Just remember that the body of the alternator needs to be fairly clean so you can get some sort of contact and pass a test current through it. Okay, so that's that. There is a dynamic way of uh, testing the alternator, that means uh, with the engine running and that's doing an alternator ripple test and this is done with an AC coupling basically it's uh, cutting out the DC part of a signal and just reading the AC portion of the electricity signal that's coming out the back of the alternator 
This is a good way to test if a diode has failed. However, the equipment is rather expensive to measure this, and it's especially necessary on vehicles that use any type of AC generated signals. Just have a quick look at the output charge, that's 14.78, which is under 15 volts, which is fine, no overcharging. Right, so let's have a quick look at relays. I've pulled this 4-pin relay out, which basically is an on-off relay, and this sends, uses a trigger to send a higher voltage to where it needs to be in the block here. Now, this one's a starter one. So it's active when you put it into a key position and then when you turn it, it will fire the starter up. Main feed or main circuit to the starter will be these two. You see that? That's now just started it without the aid of a coil to pull a switch shut. Now the issue we had here, start headlamps and heated rear window. The start relay is actually in the wrong place. It, sh it is here on our video. So you can see it marked with a black mark. And we know this also by the colours of the wires. Right, so we're going to pull this and we're going to check it. Well, I know it's okay, but I'm going to show you how to check a relay and the power feeds simply. Right, so here's the diagram of a relay. 86 and 85, that will be a switching trigger which uh, energises a coil and shuts a switch, which 30 and 87 will be a feed to the component. You can see here we're basically um, just adding a wire onto 30 and 87 which has energized the component. Easy, huh? This will be a higher power circuit wire. Right, so you can check relays by pinning them at the back here, checking the voltage under certain conditions, i.e. this white wire that I'm testing with the ignition on tells me that there is power to supply the um, coil or trigger feed to switch the relay on. You can get a tester ready-made to uh, check your relays. This one runs a current through the relays and uh, basically checks it, it switches it on and off. Obviously you need to tell it which relay it needs. Uh, you press the button and wait and it will run through 10 cycles of checking it. And obviously this is a smart bit of kit because it's measuring resistance and such like. But once it's done its 10 checks, it'll either pass or fail. Now, this one's passed a green light. Okay, um, the relay we can check in the relay housing instead. Check for connections, and this will give us a true idea of what's actually going on. So, uh, 30 and 87, as I've said, uh, the, uh, is the circuit that's switched, and not the switcher. So, what we can use is just a bypass the relay by using a jumper wire, like such. Now I'm putting it into 30 and then 87, being a starter, that's actually energised the starter motor. So there's nothing wrong with that end of the circuit. Right, so you'll know where 30 and 87 is because you can see how it is laid out on this schematics is the same as on the relay. So uh, we know which circuit that, that is. What I've got here is a couple of spade terminals on an LED lamp. The fantastic thing about this is the lamp is polarity conscious, so it will tell me which way the uh, circuit will actually flow, or the current will flow. Now, uh, I can plug it into the relay, find an earth, and oh look, there happens to be uh, power there. Going back to the schematics, 86 and 85 is the coil circuit. The coil gets energized by a switch. It pulls the coil or pushes the coil to shut the uh, 30 and 87, okay, to make a circuit. Now, what we need to do is to find the earth on this side to make sure the earth is okay. Now, sometimes you'll find that there are some hillbillies about, so don't trust whether 86 would be a positive or not. Right, so in our case here, the star, we have our switch and it basically energizes the coil from that point, okay? If we use our power feed and find the earth, okay, what we have here, the light bulb lights up, or the LED lights up. Just remember this earth on the starter has an alarm system, so it'll be inhibited. Positive to positive, well, that won't light the light bulb up, okay? You can see that very clearly. So, there we go. There's the earth for the relay switch, or the coil and uh, that's okay so what we're going to do is check the circuit from the um, switch here and when it's pulled up it will then energize the coil 
So what I'm going to do here now, um, I'm actually going to change this around because this is polarity conscious, is find a good earth and then hang on, we'll just make sure we get a good contact and turn the key. And what you see here, look, I've got a bit of a bad earth contact, but you can see the lamp is illuminating, so there's power down there. This is a good attachment for a multimeter. This plugs straight into where a fuse would be. However, this is only a 20 amp rated plug. This is well overrated for most multimeters, which are 10 amp. However, this is 410 amp for DC circuits. The multimeter I have here is actually a specialized piece of equipment. This you can check the amp rating of a fuse or the circuit where a fuse should be or for checking uh, on parasitic draw. Well we're actually going to look at the main headlamp here, uh, plug it in and then uh, replace the fuse into the holder which would be on the top there. Right, so these fuses are rated about right and 10 amp is a little bit excessive for the uh, headlight circuit but that's plugged into place and then we can use our multimeter. Of course your multimeter will be able to cope with the lighting circuit being 10 amp this one I have to zero in first with amps and it does fluctuate a bit so I'm turning the ignition on and the lamps okay and then in, onto main beam okay so what we're looking at here once it's built itself up it will tell me what the amperage is or the amount of current that is being used at this point by the uh, main beam on this circuit which is about 8 you have to check amperage in line and not from positive to negative, it's positive to positive. Right, well I've actually switched this off now and I'm watching the uh, amperage drop. It should go to about zero, which will tell me that there's no parasitic draw. Right, now I'm pulling up the dip beam. This will go to mm, about eight. Eight, yeah, that's it. Pulled it hard. That's about eight amps, okay. You can see that. So amperage basically is an uh, easy way to check what the rating of say a light bulb is so then you can put a fuse in that's rated for the wiring as well. Okay.